dear friends, it's uh, Poet WP, and uh, today we're doing something a little different. Um, as I've stated before in previous videos, um, I'm a sociologist. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in sociology, and I have a focus in psychology, and I, I'm going back to get a master's in psychology, uh, not this term, but the term after this. Um, but also, I'm a highly spiritual, mystical-oriented person. Um, I'm actually a, um, a legally ordained minister of my own sort of... I don't really like to call it a denomination, but my own sort of philosophical interpretation of a sort of hybrid uh, path that uh, combines the tenets of Christianity and Buddhism in sort of a hybrid path with the tenets of Buddhism more as a philosophical basis within the other. Um, so yeah, I'm a legally ordained minister, so I could like uh, do weddings and funerals and exorcisms and any other good last rites, I guess, that kind of thing. Never been called upon or asked to do that kind of thing, but could, I suppose, if, I, if, I, if I'll cross that bridge, if I come to it ever, I guess. Today, I'm going to be reading uh, Psalms 1, and then I'm going to be giving my interpretation of it, which, you know, Psalms is pretty, pretty easy to interpret. Psalms 1, the way of the righteous and the end of the ungodly. We need to hear this now, in these times more than ever, <laughs> as Americans especially. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and what's, whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now let's do a little breakdown of how what this means to me. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't run around with people you know are bad and have bad judgment and nefarious intent. If you keep their counsel, you will be led down the path of doom. That's what that means to me. Nor stands in the path of sinners. Now this is a uh, statement in the psalm that could be interpreted in two different ways, I feel. You could take it as, nor stand in the path of sinners. That could mean, don't try to stop sinners from sinning. Just let them do their wickedness and, you know, don't interfere, don't try to stop them to tear you down with them you, but it also could be interpreted as nor sits in this or nor stands in the path of sinners that also could be interpreted as like you don't go down the path of sinners you don't get on the path of sinners if it means you're on your own if it means your own downfall so to me, that means more so that, sure, you can try to intervene with the sinners and try to stop them from uh, falling into the pit they dig for themselves, but don't jump onto their path and don't let their disaster intersect your, your uh, fate by being on their path. Uh, so I think that there's a distinction that can be made with that. 
And that's the way I see it. So don't let... Stop the center if it doesn't destroy you. But if it threatens your own destruction, then just maybe give a warning. But don't get on the path to stop him. Don't, don't sink to his level. Don't get to his path. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Now this, I think, means... Don't personify scorn. Don't be scornful. If you have scornful work, scornful in the feelings, you got to work through them. You got to ask God to help you with them. You got to do some talk therapy or whatever your process may be. But don't uh, act and manifest that scornfulness in life. I think that's what that means to me. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Well, that's self evident. His delight is doing things that ease suffering. And his law, in, and in his law, that of the Lord, he meditates day and night. This means for the light worker, for the righteous, for the chosen few that God has selected. That's all that's on their mind constantly. It consumes their thought and their judgment in every moment they're awake. Day and night, even when they sleep. <clears throat> the law of God, the ways that ease suffering. And bring enlightenment. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That's a very famous line. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Uh, this means the tree that's planted by the rivers of water has a very good source of life. The water's right there. It's right by the river. The river keeps the water fresh. The river keeps the water flowing. The river provides the, the uh, tree with the water. That is the light of God. That is the way. That is the path. If you're on the path, you will be nourished by the water, by the Spirit of God, like the tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. A wicked man may... Del okay, this, is, this reminds me of a Buddhist text. A wicked man will delight in his wickedness and in his fall... And, a wicked man will delight in his wickedness, and uh, all, see, all will seem well with them. But when his folly turns upon him, it's over. You know, that, that, there's a sentiment within Buddhism. It's, I'm butchering the. I'm not even paraphrasing it or doing it justice, but. Yeah. Brings forth its fruit in its season. And, and the righteous may suffer, but we re reap what we sow. And eventually, it all comes back around. And, uh... <clears throat> Sooner or later, God will cut you down. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. That's, that's what happens with the wicked. Uh, whose leaf also shall not wither. Right. Your leaf cannot wither if it is being fed by the rivers of water. And what... And whatever he does shall prosper. Because you're going with the grain of the universe. You're going with the ways of God. If you go in the path that, that is uh, for the greater good, that is for the good of all of us, and is that of compassion, all the forces of the good, all the good forces of the universe, Jesus, all, everything is behind you. The ungodly are not so, and are like chaff which the wind drives away. And that's the one of the great metaphors in the Bible, separating the wheat from the chaff, the wicked from the righteous. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Now this is one that kind of perplexes me a little, but you have to kind of think about. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. I guess maybe, you know, they will be judged, but... I don't know. Maybe somebody could comment on the... Because the, that one kind of perplexes me sometimes when I read that part of it. They will be judged. The ungodly will be judged. They will not stand in the judgment. Maybe that means like... They will not attain a level of judgment within themselves that is correct and righteous. Maybe that's what that means. Maybe that's what... I think that might be what it means. Maybe that's what it is. We'll call it that. If anybody else thinks it may be something else... Chime in. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Yeah, see, that supports what I just said. Like, you know, 
the congregation of the righteous uh, will attract the righteous, and those who are not righteous will be led elsewhere. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now that all speaks for itself. I don't have to analyze that. But yeah, in these dark times, we need this. We need to hear this. We need to think about this stuff. Because this, say what you will about organized religion, which I believe organized religion for a large part is miss the uh, forest for the trees. Let the ego take over and uh, not leave the heart. And that's partially why I chose my own path. Um, like I said, I formed my own sort of belief system. My philosophy is I have, I don't seek a church or a congregation. That's not my role. My role is that of a hermit and that of a mystical poet and philosopher. I I have one leader in my church. I have one member of the congregation, one follower. They're all me. I'm what you would call a solitaire, a solo practitioner. For me, prayer and meditation, meditative prayer, is highly personal. It's something I do in private. Others, their path, they seek fellowship with um, other people in a congregation. To me, it's a highly private, spiritual, mystical experience. And it's a personal path for me. So, yeah, that's my basis. And like I said, I draw upon all Christian texts, not just the King James Bible, the Gnostic Gospels, the Book of Enoch, the Dead Sea Scrolls, all of them. Uh, and I also draw upon uh, heavily with Buddhist texts, and I practice Buddhist meditations. So I have a hybrid, but I worship Jesus. But I have a philosophy largely based in Buddhism, which coincides very well with the philosophy that Jesus Christ laid out, by the way. That's another thing I tend to write a lot about. And my poetry reflects that, too. Anyway, I'll wrap this video up. It's getting a, a wee bit long. Sorry for the unsteady camera. I know it's annoying. But, um, you know, I kind of, in a way, pride myself on the whole shoestring budget thing. To me, it's kind of a point of pride. Um, the message matters, not... Yeah, I'm doing all this with an iPhone. And I, I, I get a kick out of that. The fact that... You know, I'm not going to, um, maybe, maybe if my channel grows, I'll get like real equipment. But you know what? This, this works good enough. And the message is what's important, not the production value to me. And I hope that my viewers can respect that. I'm sorry that, uh, you know, but I'm doing what I can with what I got right now. So, um, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, thank you very much for tuning in and I will continue to read psalms i'm going to read the whole book of psalms and do a breakdown this will be the only video with the little intro of like who is this guy and why is he reading us the bible and then telling us what he thinks about it uh well just to give you an idea yeah and i'll give you more of an intro video later like another later if anybody wants to see it who am i or who is poet wp learn more about me if you want um but, yeah, just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from, why I'm doing this. So, yeah, there will be more chapters of Psalms uh, to follow, and um, without all the explanations and intros and stuff. All right, have a blessed day, everybody, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.